This is a pack of lithium batteries that I took off an old laptop. It doesn't look like much, but from them you can actually extract quite a few chemicals. The one I'm after today is called cobalt, and we're gonna extract it in the form of its salt, which is called cobalt chloride. I need it for another project, which is making vanillin from scratch, but that's not the topic of this video. Anyway, back to our batteries. The first step is to take a single battery and dismantle it. But before doing that, there are two things to check for. The first is that the battery needs to be discharged, otherwise it could catch fire in your hands, which is not really what you want, I think. The second is that your battery needs to be made of what is called lithium cobalt oxide, and not any other metal like nickel or manganese. To check for that, you can look if there is the 3 liters LCO on the casing, or in the online datasheet if you can find it. If there is any other letters like LMO, NMC or LFP for example, do not use those because they simply will not work for the process in this video. Here you can see, after we dismantled everything, that we have three main components. On the left is the useless plastic junk, and you can throw that away, because it's safe to dispose and it never touched the more toxic metals inside, you know, like the cobalt or the lithium. The second cup contains a sheet of aluminium, covered in a black material that contains our precious cobalt and other stuff as well. And on the right is another sheet made out of copper and covered in carbon. All of this is usually soaked in a weird solvent that is not good for your health, so it's better to wear gloves when handling this stuff. And then I took a short break to poke this cool butterfly. Anyway, the first step is to take a middle sheet and somehow get the black stuff off the aluminium. The best way to do so is to dissolve the aluminium away. For that, I'm gonna measure both the sheet and some sodium hydroxide. For 18.5 grams of sheet, I measured about 33 grams of solid sodium hydroxide pellets. I then added water up to the 400 milliliters mark and started adding the aluminum sheet bit by bit. So sometime it should start to dissolve. The sodium hydroxide reacts with the aluminum to form the soluble sodium aluminate and hydrogen gas which bubbles out of the solution. I let it react overnight on the hot plate to make sure to dissolve all of it and then filter off what was left. For the filter I use this ceramic wool because it will resist the very corrosive solution of sodium hydroxide and sodium aluminate unlike paper which would just dissolve in it. I then washed the dark residue with some more water to get rid of all the stuff in solution. And so now we should be left with this thing containing our cobalt. Alright, so now we have our lithium cobalt dioxide right here, which has been washed like what, three times I believe? So it's three of, mostly three of aluminium. And now we're gonna measure 30 grams of this 23% hydrochloric acid to dissolve this uh, oxide. Be careful though, because this reaction generates a little bit of chlorine gas. It's not very much at all, but it's never good, you know? Yo, I just wanted to show this huge uh, chlorine bubble. It's so huge, it's taking the whole side of the beaker. And as you can see, it is in fact a uh, yellow-green, kinda, because of the chlorine. I don't really know if you can see, because the background is not white. Let me put that, perhaps, as a comparison. Behind. Yeah, I think you can see it a little bit. <laughs> and when it's gonna pop, I'm gonna have to run. <laughs> After some time, it started turning this bright blue turquoise color. And it's a very good sign, because it's actually the cobalt forming some COCl42- ions, which are this blue color because of their tetrahedral geometry. After boiling it for some time and letting it react overnight, I added some water, and you can see the color changes to a pink-red, which is the cobalt complexing with the newly added water, which this time has an octahedral geometry, hence the change in color. Now I'm just gonna filter what has not dissolved, so there's probably some carbon left and probably some complex that has not dissolved, which is fine. And as you can see, the filtrate is a very beautiful pinkish red color, which is what we want. It's perfect. 
we are left with this beautiful solution containing a cobalt chloride but also lithium chloride. And this means we need actually one more step to separate those two from each other. Right, so now we're going to measure approximately 30 grams of uh, sodium carbonate. I don't even know if you can see, but whatever. And this is to precipitate the cobalt carbonate because it's very insoluble. So I'm just going to measure out like a little bit less than 30 grams to not overshoot because it won't dissolve then if I overshoot. When it was fully dissolved, I added it to the cobalt chloride solution to precipitate cobalt carbonate. I stirred everything until it had all reacted and then filtered everything. It's very difficult to filter, so I also used my vacuum cleaner setup to help. Alright, so now we're left with this, which is the carbonate, as you can see, but it's still very slushy. And this is the solution which is supposedly containing the lithium, which I, I don't really care for now. I will do it like off camera probably. So I'm just gonna put this off the camera. And we're gonna focus on this one. So the first thing I wanna do, because as you can see, there is still quite a bit of liquid in it because it's very hard to filter. It took me like uh, a few hours. So first off, I'm just gonna add some more water and decant it to get rid of even more like sodium ions and lithium ions. Alright, and now we just have to wait. Alright, so now that this thing has decanted after like what, two hours, three hours, something like this, it was decently quick. So now we're just gonna throw the more the liquid. Alright, so now that we have our decanted cobalt carbonate. We're just gonna convert some of it to some cobalt chloride, which we're gonna need for the synthesis as a catalyst. So first off, I'm just gonna add some hydrochloric acid to this beaker. What, 40 mils, something like this. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be precise, it doesn't matter that much. Then I put it aside. And now I'm gonna drop some random bits of, uh, of cobalt carbonate until, until it doesn't dissolve. When everything was dissolved, I started boiling down the solution, and after some time, red crystals of COCl2 hexahydrate started to appear. But I actually need the anhydrous form, so I continued heating strongly to drive off any moisture. The crystal slowly changed color from dark blue to sky blue, which indicates that it's now an hydrous. At the end, I measured it to be almost 20 grams, which is more than enough for what I will need, so that's a great success. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.